refuse. I command that rat to confess. Lift up your right hand. Father will give you glory. Father, take control. Use me as your servant. Oh, let your word come with power and authority. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can please take your seat. Second Samuel chapter 6. What a powerful ministration. God bless you. Oh, do it better for him. Do it better for him. Second Kings chapter 6. And um, I want to read the verse 11 downwards. Second Kings chapter 6, verse 11 downwards. Let me take from verse 9. And David, that's Second Kings, Second Samuel, please forgive me. Second Samuel chapter 6. Verse 9 downwards. Are you ready with me? Yes. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 7. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. And David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah and called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it aside into the house of Obedidom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obededom three months. And Obededom was blessed by the Lord. And everything around him was blessed. And it was told King David, saying, The Lord have visited and blessed the house of Obededom. And all that pertained unto him. Because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidom into the city of David with gladness. Go with me to First Kings, First Samuel, First Samuel. Chapter ten. Verse 4. Second Samuel chapter 10, verse 4. And they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hands. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God, where is the garrison of the Philistines. 
And it shall come to pass when thou art come hither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with pastry and a tablet and a pipe and harp before them and they shall prophesy. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man. I want to talk for the next 15 minutes. Um, the subject is titled um, The Mystery of Prophetic Presence. The Mystery of Prophetic Presence. The Bible makes us to understand that the people of Israel went for the ark of God. When they had the ark in their possession, the Bible said they got to a place where the ark became unstable and Uzzah in his innocence with a good motive was trying to help the ark of God so that the ark will not fall. Understand that anytime you see the ark of God, it is symbolic of God's presence. The ark of God is symbolic of God's presence. And the Bible said when Uzzah tried helping God, in other words, when he tried helping the presence of God, God became anointed and God smote him and he killed him. When this thing happened, David became anointed, became displeased with God and decided he will no longer take the ark of God to the city of David. And almost everyone in Israel around that time rejected the ark of God. But there was a man called Obedidom who needed a miracle, who needed the presence of God. So when everyone rejected God's presence, Obedidom carried the ark into his house. And everyone was expecting the Obedidom and his household would die the same way Uzzah died. But they waited for the first week and there was no announcement of death in the house of Obedidom. It was one month and there was no announcement of death. It was two months, it was three months and by the third month, everyone connected to the household of Obedidom had become a miracle, had become a testimony. Not that they have received a testimony. They themselves have been blessed. Even the sheep in the house of Obedidom had become a symbol of God's blessing. So when people saw that instead of death, rather blessing had come to the house of Obedidom, the Bible said they announced it to David that Obedidom and his house have been blessed not because they are skillful, not because they are anointed, but they have been blessed because of the ark of God. When David got to know that the ark of God, which is symbolic of God's presence, has released blessing into the house of Obedidom, David decided to go and fetch the ark of God. Your reaction to God's presence determines whether you are preserved or you are destroyed. How you handle God's presence determines whether you end at your destination or you die in the midst of your journey. Whenever a man enters the womb of the spirit, and begin to celebrate the presence of God. The presence of God releases divine enabling power for the man to achieve results that, that are naturally impossible. I looked at our Savior Jesus Christ and I saw the great things that Je the Lord did with him. And I thought that it was because he was the son of God proper. But the Bible said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. That means that God anointed Jesus with his presence. 
the same person that was killing other people, the same person released Jesus into a realm of glory. There is a mystery of what I call of the presence of the prophet or of the prophetic presence. Every prophet you come in a contact with carries an anointing, carries an unction, carries a mantle and your reaction to the prophet determines what the anointing on his life will do for you. The Bible talks about the story of a man of God who was a prophet that God sent to a specific location with a prophetic word to speak to a king. The Bible said when the prophet entered there and started ministering the word of God, the prophetic word was not okay for the king. So the king stretched forth his hand even to touch the prophet. And the Bible said the hand of the king stayed and became leprous. It became leprous because he was fighting the presence on the prophet. At another time, the Bible said, Samuel met Saul and spoke to him. That after you have left my presence, you are going to have an encounter with a company of prophets. And these men are going to the presence of God. And these men will prophesy. And when they prophesy, you are going to prophesy alongside with them and you shall be turned into another man. It means anytime you come into the presence of the prophet, the unction of the prophet must be able to turn you into another man. So even though Saul was not a prophet, but his encounter with the prophet Saul started prophesying. Are you with me? Are you in church? I have five minutes. Saul started prophesying. There was another time where Saul was pursuing David and David ran to the presence of prophet Samuel. And the Bible said Saul sent some men to go and arrest David. And when they got to the presence of Samuel, they could not do anything than to join the prophet Samuel to prophesy. Saul became anointed and sent the second group of people to go and arrest David. When they got there, they forgot their mission and they started prophesying. The third group was sent. When they got there, they forgot their mission and they started prophesying. Then Saul himself decided to go and arrest David. When he got there, he forgot his mission. The presence of the prophet releases security. The presence of the prophet releases divine protection. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Anytime you get connected to the mysteries of the presence of the prophet, your life becomes secure. And I pray for someone this evening, may God secure your life. May God secure your business. May God secure everything connected to your life. 